What's going on guys? This is the Full Stack Bro coming at you with another video. As you can see, I made some changes for 2025. Shaved my head, now I'm back to bald. I always used to be bald. Um, I started like, what, it was like back in, what, 2013, 2014? And I always kept up that style, but I figured like last year, let me just grow out my hair and see where it goes. And I did like the hair, but this super clean, bro, super clean. With the beer combo, you can't go wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, today's video is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be talking about the eight coding myths that are not really relevant to software engineering, all right? What people get wrong. Like a lot of people think that software engineering is the glamorous life where you're making a lot of money, that you're gonna be building a lot of cool things, that you're gonna be working remotely, and you're gonna have that nice, easy life. Now, not a lot of people are able to get that type of luxury, right? Especially when you first start off. I mean, I, I started as a web designer, then I jumped into web development and I had to move my way up to get to this level now where I'm a senior full stack engineer. And a lot of it was just trial and tribulation, trying to, trying to do things that weren't necessarily best practices and you know, just trying to figure my way out around the tech space and the tech space back then were, was very easy to get a job. Now it's kind of hard. It's really, really hard actually to put yourself out there, uh, deal with recruiters, be fed false promises that you're going to get an interview and then you end up not getting it. There's a lot of fake recruiters out there as well. And, um, you know, these are the things that you have to look into now. These are the things that you have to deal with um, every single day, especially if you're trying to jump into tech. Number one is and I learned this too, it's like, you gotta be a math genius. Let me tell you something, bro. You don't have to be a math genius to do this, to be a software engineer, web developer, whatever route you wanna take. With software engineering, you don't really need to know math. Like you, all it is is logic, like pure logic. If this is a condition, then do this. If not, do something else. And then also like, how do you loop through that data to get the certain information that you need and then what you're gonna be outputting to the screen for an app or uh, a website. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. There's a lot of logic. There's a lot of using AI today to um, help you program a lot of things. And it's not gonna be, you know, just, I'm gonna create these crazy math equations. Now, if you wanna do game development, then yeah. If you wanna do machine learning, then yeah, you need to know math. But if that's not your career path, if you just want to be a strictly a software engineer, don't worry about math, okay? Number two is that you're going to be coding every single day. That's not true. If you're working with the company, you're going to be coding at least like every day. If you, if you don't have anything on your calendar, I would say like four to six hours. If that, mostly it's around like jumping on meetings, you know, like providing best practices for the team to, to use, like increased productivity, tech planning. So if you're at the senior level, you're gonna be doing a lot of tech planning um, on diff different projects, working with product on, you know, what the requirements are gonna be. Are you gonna uh, take the requirements that are given by the stakeholders, break that down into smaller pieces for the devs to actually work on and effectively get done, ask the right questions, get the right requirements, and just have that back and forth conversation. It's all about communication once you get to that next level. You're gonna be still coding, but you, you might be working on a project on your own or you're gonna be pair programming it with someone else. Um, but majority of the time is it's meetings, it's collaborating with teams, there's also support. So like if you're working through support on a company, if you're like on call, you're going to be doing a lot of that. Um, learning the systems, understanding logs, all that stuff. Um, so you're not going to be sitting there every single day in like in a dark room coding. That's not going to happen. All right. But it depends on the company that you work for. Some companies don't like meetings while others are just like, you know, what, we'll check in once a week or twice a week and just try to understand the timelines of projects just to get things done. All right. Number three is that you need to know every single programming language. You, you really don't need to know every single hip and hop programming language that is out there, bro. You don't. I tell you guys on this channel, I have multiple videos talking about this, but all you need to do is learn at least three core languages that work in tangent with each other. So say, for example, if I have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they work together with web development, right? Or building an app. Um, Python backend, right? Node.js, MySQL, dealing with databases, all those languages work together, but it all depends on the need of what you're, what you're doing. 
If you're strictly a front-end developer, you're probably gonna be focused on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You might be using a framework like uh, React.js, Next.js. Um, there's also Angular Vue. Whatever they're using, whatever the company's tech stack is, that's what you're primarily gonna be using, all right? So um, do you need to know everything? No. If you want to spend time learning a new language, by all means, do that on your free time. If you wanna learn Java, if you wanna learn Flutter, for mobile app development, do that. But um, you know, most of the time it's just gonna be like, you, you, want, you learn one foundational language. In my case, it was HTML, CSS, right? Together, and then I jumped into JavaScript and then I got into CMS systems like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, all that stuff, right? And then transitioned over into PHP as well and learned those to become a web develop developer. So. As you start to get these opportunities, if you're doing an internship, you're gonna be learning a lot in terms of what their tech stack is. And then you're gonna learn the foundations there and then you're gonna branch off into other languages that's gonna solve a problem. Number four is that you're gonna be the lone genius. Like you're gonna be figuring out everything on your own and you're gonna be better off that way. Some programmers are really good at that because they're very productive and they're very, very good at what they do. Then there's other developers that just fold. Like they try to solve a problem and then they spend eight or nine hours trying to solve two or three problems and not get anywhere. Don't be that, don't do that, okay? So if you have the opportunity to talk with another developer or work with another de developer that knows more than you and actually has more experience, always ask questions and you know peer review your code. If you're working on a project and you need someone to look at it, have someone peer review it. If you need me personally to look at your code, let me know. Like I have my email here on, on the screen, hit me up. We could set up a call. I could look at your code. I could provide feedback. Um, and I could tell you if you're going down the right track or not, because, you know, working on different projects, like if you're just doing a to-do list, that's one thing, right? Like that's just to get your feet wet. But then if you want to work on real world projects, that's actually going to get you in the door to these, to these companies. That's what you need to focus on. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. You don't have to be a person that's on an island just trying to figure out like how to solve problems on your own. You could reach out to other people. You, like I said, you could use AI. AI is here to help, guys. Use AI as much as as you can, bro. I used GitHub Copilot recently, and I had my thoughts about GitHub Copilot whether it was going to be good or bad. And honestly, it's really, really good. Depending on how you set it up, what kind of coding standards that you have is going to help you code a lot better and it will provide you with suggestions around, you know, making improvements on your code. Like if you're doing anything that's redundant, not to do it, uh, do, using the drive method, don't repeat yourself, right? As you're writing code, you don't want to repeat yourself over and over again. That's why you would create like utility functions to handle some of that workflow stuff. Um, and just go through the flow of writing code and building out projects, right? But working with other developers is gonna help you with becoming better as a developer. Trust me, I've, I've used to have that mentality where I was like, you know, I'm just gonna work on stuff my, on my own and I'm just gonna get things done. Let me tell you, working with another developer and looking at it from a bigger picture and actually like looking at my flaws in the code and what could be better saved me a lot of time and headache and I didn't have to s sit in front of the computer and try to figure out what, what to do next. So don't be a lone genius. If you're building something on your own, of course, go that route. But then at some time, at some point, you're gonna get burnt out. So you're gonna have to delegate it to someone else or ask for help. Number five is that you're gonna get paid a bunch of money. I'm gonna tell you straight up, bro. If you start now, you ain't gonna get paid that much money. I think at most you probably get paid like 50,000 a year. And that depends on if you're working remotely, that depends on if you're going to the office, like if it's a startup, you might be making more money than that, probably like 80 to 90,000 a year. But it's all about experience. The more experience that you have, the more money that you'll get, the more valuable you will be. So I would say three to five years of experience will probably hit you at you know over six figures in income. Other than that, you know, you have to really level up to really see money, you know? Um, you could essentially build a SaaS business, right? Like from scratch using AI and other tools to kind of help delegate some of that work and build something that's profitable that you could put online. But that takes a lot of hard work and dedication, okay? So you need to jump into the workspace, get into tech, work 
even if you can't find a job right now, like look at small mom and pop shops in your area, right? That needs a website. You can start managing the website, right? Build it, like refactor it, make it look nice and pretty and all that stuff. Um, add additional functionality. Um, if you want to support, like, you know, adding new features to the website, you can get built on that, do it freelancing, you know? But it's all about like what path you want to take. Cause a lot of people right now who are trying to jump into tech, they're not having any success. It's just application after application and they're not hearing anything back. So at least take initiative to figure out other ways to make money. If this is what you want to do, work on like a simple website, right? A portfolio website and build projects, learn and build projects and put it out there and make sure that you maintain those projects. Because if you don't maintain it and it's been up on your portfolio for years and it doesn't work, you're going to be questioned on it in an interview. So make sure that you're you're taking action of building something, getting it to a good spot, uploading it to your GitHub account or hosting it on like your website. Right. Then over the course of months, you start to get better and better from programming. You go back to your old projects, make refactor it, add new features to it and maintain those projects. Go see some money if you do projects and just keep building on your, your skill set. Number six is all you're going to be doing is building creative stuff. All you're going to be doing is building fun projects. Let me tell you something. That's not going to happen in the beginning. Yeah. You're going to be excited. Like, oh, I'm working on these projects. I'm doing all this stuff. Right. But then at the end of the day, bro, you're going to be working on small bugs, things that are pretty easy. Then you're going to start transitioning into some projects that are not necessarily like fun but you're gonna learn something from it. So any project that you're working on, you're gonna be learning something about the system. You're gonna be learning how to build things correct, correctly. You're gonna be more creative in terms of how you could take this project, right? That's bland and, and actually make it creative, right? Like ask those questions around like, when a user uses this feature, how can we make it the best it can be so that users are happy and we don't have to go back and refactor things later. Okay. So take whatever project that you get with confidence and happiness that you actually got a project and you're working on it, but then also to like, just know you're not going to be building cool things all the time. It's going to be very mundane and you're going to lose motivation, but you got to get things done. So like try to make it as fun as possible so you could get those things done. Um, number seven is that you have to start young when it comes to programming. Now, I started in high school. I learned how to program in high school. I was lucky enough to have uh, computer science as a shop. I was going to learn. And I didn't know what computer science was at the end of the day. I didn't know. But then I learned um, C++ programming, building websites. So when MySpace was, was out and that was like the new social media platform, right? And I think Facebook was more for college students and all that stuff at first. Um, building layouts was you could build your own layout in MySpace. So like all of my classmates at that time, we would go on our MySpace, right? We would work on projects, then go on our MySpace. And then basically what we were learning, like try to adapt a new layout based off of what we learned. It was pretty cool. Some people had great layouts. Some people were getting really creative with like how they were building things. And, you know, just to kind of get around of what was possible on MySpace and push the boundaries a little bit. So that was the best way to learn. I was able to keep up with it ever since, right? I'm 33 now. If you're like my age right now, you want to transition from the finance department or the finance sector and jump into becoming a software engineer, you could definitely do it. The only thing that you need to do though is actually uh, get a course online, use YouTube as like a free resource, right? There's a bunch of YouTube channels that have uh, courses online that you could go with and actually start building projects. And then, you know, look at, look on uh, Udemy, Coursera, Pl Pluralsight, any of those sites and actually um, look at languages that you want to learn and pick a course that will fit you and make sure that you do that course every single day. If you do that course every single day and make progress, you will be able to jump into the tech space. Trust me. And if you know people like that you've been working with that know someone that is working in tech that could get you in the door a lot faster, that's even better. So it, it doesn't matter what age you are. If you want to do this on the side, do it. Don't waste your time. Don't wait until the perfect time to do it, just start doing it now. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you are making an effort to provide value for yourself, 
and give and build your skill set in this sec in this field, you will do fine. Last thing I'm gonna say to you guys, and this is something that has been rampant on YouTube and in the news, is that AI is gonna be taking developer jobs. That's not gonna happen anytime soon. All right, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. AI is here to be an assistant to help you program. So if there's something that you don't know, you don't wanna go on Google, you don't wanna go through Stack Overflow and really look at forms and try to figure things out, ChatGPT, Codium, uh, Claude, any of those platforms will help you. GitHub Copilot, it doesn't matter. You can use that as an advantage to help you pair program something and solve a problem. Don't be afraid. I will say this though, if you are a complete beginner and all you're doing is relying on AI to help you build something and you're not really understanding the core fundamentals, you're gonna fail. 100%, you're gonna fail and you're never gonna get better. So if there's a problem that you're trying to solve or a project that you're trying to build, try to build it on your own before you go into uh, asking AI for help. At least build the foundation, the blueprint, then try to figure out different ways to make that project better, okay? You can ask AI to help you with brainstorm ideas and then pick an idea and try to implement it yourself, right? Try to build it yourself. If you get stuck after a certain point, after doing research on your own and trying to do it on your own, then ask AI for help is not a big deal. But what I'm noticing a lot is junior developers are relying on AI way too much and they're introducing a lot of bugs in the code. That makes it harder for someone like me to go and refactor it and now have to clean up the mess and introduce more tech debt, right? We don't wanna do that. 2025, we don't wanna do that. So what you need to do, use AI as an assistant when building these projects, and you're gonna notice that you're gonna be learning a lot more and getting things done as opposed to having, you know, AI determine what the solution should be. You should always constantly be thinking outside the box in terms of solving a problem, all right? So, those are the eight coding myths that um, I wanted to debunk for you guys because, you know, being a software engineer, I could tell you right now, I love this. I love building new things, solving problems. I solve problems every single day. But because I am a senior full stack developer, a lot of my time is around helping others solve problems. So if you don't have that mindset, you're not going to really like it as a software engineer, right? If you want to just work tandemly on your own, could be a web developer, a web designer, and just build a website, work with someone on like how to improve that website and be on your own, right? Make your money that way. But being a software engineer is gonna be great. If you're looking to jump in, start now, don't wait, and you should be okay, all right? So that's it, guys, that's the video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know um, if this has motivated you to become a software developer. And if it has, you know, what are the steps you're gonna be taking to, to get there, all right? And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, right? Like thefullstackbro at gmail.com, reach out to me. If you wanna jump on a call, we can schedule that as well, all right? We'll talk soon, guys.